UFM, you could say Universidad Francisco Marroquín, aka University of Free Marketeers. Uh, I just can't imagine going to any other school in Guatemala. The first book that I read was uh, Economics in One Lesson, uh, probably no surprise. I believe in the ideas that the university is trying to promote. I want to help to change my country. Ideas are so important because thoughts become things. I love it here. <laughs> Well, the system under which most of Latin America has lived since colonial times is what Adam Smith called mercantilism, where the governments try to run the economy and they establish privileges, protection for this industry, fomenting that other activity, and trying to allocate resources according to the wisdom of those in, in power at the moment. The result is misallocation of resources on very wide scale. Muso Manuel Ayao, he was a founder of Universidad Francisco Marroquín. He was an engineer by training, uh, an entrepreneur, a natural entrepreneur, uh, but not only an entrepreneur business-wise, he was also uh, an amazing entrepreneur of ideas. As a young man, Ayao lived in the U.S. and Canada, eventually earning an engineering degree from Louisiana State University. But when he comes back to Guatemala and he, he tries to uh, find a job now an engineer, a father, he sees that it's very difficult to get a job. And he couldn't find an explanation. One of his friends, who uh, flies to Mexico, brings back to, to Guatemala a pamphlet written by Ludwig Mises. And Musso reads that. And he says, well, here I can find an explanation as to why Guatemala is still poor. And he, he took the advantage of a business trip to the States to visit uh, the Friends at the Foundation for Economic Education, where he gets to meet uh, Leonard Reed and a whole bunch who was there working at, uh, at the time. This is the uh, late 1950s. Of course, they were all thrilled to find this young engineer from Guatemala who was intellectually curious, who was smart as you can get, and who's really getting involved in, in, in the battle of ideas. Eventually, Musso becomes a member of the Mont Perrin Society, where he gets to meet lots of people, and where he started to have a, an intellectual relationship with Friedrich Hayek. And it was a conversation with Hayek that uh, made Musso realize uh, the importance of uh, college education. Musso says, well, this is, seems like a, like a sensible strategy, if you uh, educate the intellectual elite, eventually uh, the ideas will come down and turn around the country. Muso Ayao founded Francisco Marroquin University in 1971. Today, UFM has around 2,700 students, and the school remains committed to the ideas upon which it was founded. I think one of the things makes, that makes us unique is that all of our students, doesn't matter whether you're studying architecture, education or medicine, and of course law and economics. Everybody has to take three courses in free market economics. And on top of that, everybody has to take two courses in social philosophy, the social philosophy of freedom. So all of our students read Hayek, all of our students read Mises. When I started reading Mises, I was in Germany uh, for vacation. And people were talking about the, the situation in Germany and how uh, wages were going down in Germany because there are all these uh, different immigrants coming in. And um, nobody really knew how to interpret the situation. They were just sort of complaining about what was going on. And uh, I was actually pretty excited because I could understand, well, what's happening is that there are people with lesser opportunities and now they're getting greater uh, job opportunities and you know that's gonna get um, production costs lowered, which is gonna make everything cheaper. And even though they're complaining right now, everything's gonna get better. I think that students, um are already more suspicious of government in Guatemala because its failures are more apparent. Um, corruption is more upfront and in your face. But I think that once you give them the tools to analyze it and to understand why it happens, it, it's very helpful. And it, it lends itself to students of all different backgrounds and also of different ideological persuasions. 
When, well, when students get involved in, in experiments, experiment is a great uh, tool uh, for learning about economics because you don't learn from the blackboard, you don't learn because you know the teacher or the professor drew a certain supply and demand curve, but you learn because you participate actively as a buyer or as a seller and you see how your behavior and the behavior of others uh, conforms to theory, uh, usually or in some cases, you know, why it doesn't. About eight years ago, in the year 2003, uh, we decided to do different experimentations on bringing Socratic practice to, to the classroom. The students, like Hayek says, have knowledge that's unique to them. It's dispersed amongst all of them. So you can make that uh, intellectual capital alive by offering environments where students are choosing, where they are interacting, where they're exchanging. Um, or you can put them in rooms like this where they are still silent and passive. One of the things we're learning here is learning how to learn. Political corruption and socialist policies have made life extremely difficult for most Guatemalans. Can a small, radical, free market university really make a difference? I think what makes the school really unique is that it's set in a country that is going through a really tough situation right now. The people are really concerned about how to fix their country, and they see these ideas as the solution to that. The commitment that I found here is absolutely unique. What we want to do here is to continue the conversation on these ideas. And our hope is that the students of Marroquín will eventually become leaders in their own fields as entrepreneurs, and maybe some of them even politicians. And they will be the ones who will be turning around the tortilla in Guatemala and bring these ideas to life. If we can plant an idea in somebody's mind, that's so powerful. UFM graduate Alfredo Guzman was appointed director of the state-run telecommunications monopoly Guatel in 1995. At that time, Guatemala had a population of 11 million people but fewer than 300,000 phones. Against all odds, Guzman and his colleagues privatized Guatel and opened the market to free competition. How did that experiment work out? Today we have over 18 million telephone lines in Guatemala. The people that were part of my team uh, that worked on that, uh, most of them came from the UFM. So we had a clear vision uh, of saying, oh no, we should do this within a, an environment of freedom. I think that Dr. Ayala was very wise in thinking that it was important to address uh, ideas and how ideas change um, the world. He probably wouldn't feel comfortable with what I'm saying, but uh, he, he, in many ways he, he was that beacon of light for Latin America. Some of the most important influence of the Montpelier Society has been in, other, in countries other than the leading countries. For example, <coughs> in Guatemala, where, you, where some of the members of the Montpelier Society organized a private university, uh, Francisco Mariquan University, which has become one of the leading universities in Latin America, entirely based on the principles of the Montpelier Society, <laughs> on free markets and private Thank property. You. It may sound ambitious, and it is ambitious, but my hope for, for, for Guatemala is if we do our job right here at Marroquín, if we're able to, to teach the, uh, the intellectual leaders of, of this country, uh, I hope to see sort of like a Hong Kong in Latin America. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs>